now we've got our, our piece of foam on here. You can see that it, it makes it out to the nose right here. And so we have to trim back all the way down to here. And our, our nice point is out here, but that's okay. Uh, we'll sand it a little bit flatter. And it's not gonna dive in over here because, let me come around here like this. If you can see here, there's this gap there. And once we sand this in further, this will be able to go in and that gap will go away. Yet up here where it needs to be longer, this is already correct. So that means that we're all good to go here. And uh, we're going to trim this back, sand it to, to a point again. And then we're gonna make this little piece that goes up here. You can see that, that this little piece is missing here and it actually curves down I mean, well, it curves down, but it's way up here that ties in. So we have to make this little piece uh, that goes up in here. Right there. That's next up right now. So that's our cut line, and we're just going to take a sawzall here and uh, trim this off right now, and then we can sand it down to that point again. Our issue here is that there's epoxy here, and that's going to be very hard to sand very quickly. So I'm going to take off just a little epoxy with this fast sander, and then we'll move on to a slow sander. For those of you worried about that fast sander taking off too much, I only went in so I can see I still left high along there. You can see that ridge along there. So, and I didn't worry about this because this is just foam. It'll thin down pretty easily, but this hard epoxy here, we didn't want it sticking out a quarter inch. That'd take forever to sand off. So I just left a little bit for the other sander to take off, took up the majority of it so that we wouldn't mess this up at all. Now we can flatten this all out with the flexi sander. Can go ahead and start rolling that out. All right. Well, now for the fun part. So we're just going to all start and try to roll, barely roll to begin with. It gets easier later. This first start is the hard part. Uh, lift it back so I don't get that glob. You have to lift it off of there. I don't want that glob. And, the, and you've got a string. No, I have de-stringed. In now. All right, we're picking up our rope. I'm walking. We're walking. We're walking. <laughs> You're what? All you have to do is stuff in it as far as it'll stuff. Keep stuffing it until it can't, won't go in anymore. Because it's already measured to come out to the five millimeters if we stuff it all the way in. Yeah, we're pretty much almost done here. Getting ready to put our first few layers of carbon fiber uh, over this. And uh, so what we did is we taped down these edges on both sides here so that the cloth and epoxy is gonna stick to this because this is the, the bonding surface on the two sides that the wood is going to have to bond. And so we don't wanna put uh, cloth there right now. So we're just gonna put it from here down to the two edges here. So we taped that off to make that a little cleaner. All right, so we're first wetting out the wood before we lay down the first layer of carbon fiber. And we've wet the whole thing once, but we're letting it soak into the wood grain because this should be very wet when we lay down the first layer. And we're gonna put some more on now that it has a chance to sink in. We 
You want to make sure that the wood is soaked up enough that it's not going to suck all of the resin out of the carbon fiber. Nice and wet. first cloth here. You grab this end, I'll grab the other. Not much. Once this sticks, it's going to stick. Are you far enough? Not far enough. All right. I feel like I'm beyond it, but... So much. Got our peel ply on. Now we're just trying to smooth it out. Get the bubbles out of here. So squeegee out any excess to the sides and any bubbles out the same way. The uh, marathon job is done. I was both looking forward to this, and as I am in most jobs we do, and not looking forward to it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to get it done. But I was wondering what it was going to be like trying to do these five layers in one shot, you know. All right, this is uh, bulkhead number nine. We just finished up number eight, which is way down there right now. Brian's sanding. Always more sanding. He loves sanding. Anyway, uh, we'll put that into the shipping container eventually. But... For the moment, since we have to move a few things around to get that back in there, we just set it over there. Now this bulkhead number nine is pretty easy. All we have to do is put rope along that bottom edge. It doesn't need any along the top or sides. So I'm gonna to get to work on that. And meanwhile, if we take a look at our four beam, next thing up is to put in these forms that go across here so that we can put our new strips across there which we want to get to this week so what we tried doing here we're just testing on this one and it seems to be holding is uh, used Elmer's glue and the reason we used Elmer's glue we used it right on the peel ply but the nice part about Elmer's is that it uh, hardens up but it's water soluble later so after we put these on and remove that top section and we want to get rid of these forms. We can just snap them off of this and pull the peel ply, but even if we can't get it you know, off easily, we can always wash it off with water if we have to. But uh, it seems to be holding pretty well, so that, that's going to work. They don't have to be super strong, just enough to hold the pressure of these things. So that looks like we have a functional method there. So. So that's our plan. I have to have the mask on right now because Brian's sanding and there's a little bit of dust in the air. I Elmer glued them all on to here. So we'll let them set up now. And uh, we can start dry fitting the cedar planks again. So our new piece uh, has been put in right here. And uh, we've shaped the front now to match the plans and it comes exactly up here to a nice point and this is vertical so it all looks really good and hi Brian 
boat. You can see how nice and narrow the front of this boat is for piercing those waves that we want to go through. So it's looking good. I'm happy to have this part done. It's been a while coming because that nose of the boat has been kind of ugly. <laughs> so now it's not. All set. We're on to bulkhead number nine. We've already routed out all of the places where we need the rope. And we're going to do three ropes together right now. Each of them is about six feet long, so it takes three of us. So Marianne is here to help us. In the case of this bulkhead, the rope is too long for the number of people that we have available to roll that big of a roll. So what we do is we cut it down into shorter lengths, in this case around six feet each, three of them. And that means we have to seam them when we put them in, so we add an extra foot and taper that so that the various pieces where they meet are overlapped for one foot. While we had both Dale and John here, we decided to pull out some of the larger bulkheads so that Brian and I could work on them without having to extract them from the shipping container where all the other bulkheads are stacked with them. And this is, uh, will help us out on Monday when we get to this one. This is bulkhead number five, but what we're going to be doing today is working on bulkhead number six, which we have dubbed Big Bertha simply because it's the largest bulkhead in the entire boat and it's going to be much more difficult to work with simply because it's going to take a lot of people. So at first we just have here bulkhead number five but we're about to put that away and then we'll go get Big Bertha out of the shipping container. Now fortunately at this point that bulkhead number six is in multiple pieces so it's not too terrible to move around but eventually once we put all five sections together and if you look at it right now you can see that edge on that's really thick foam that's the thickest foam we have and it's by far the heaviest panels that we have but this is the major bulkhead of the boat so it's important that this one is very strong so that's one of the five pieces of Big Bertha right there that we're trying to get around the front of the boat and the table and get it laid down I'm using a strap to help me lift the weight there with my legs instead of my arms because this is quite heavy. So now that we have the first section, we are going to go ahead and go find the next one and bring it out. Now, as you can see, this piece is just uh, one of the parts that go in the hole and much smaller. It only took two people to move that one, but that's going to get attached to the one you just saw come out and so that one's going to get even larger and even heavier once the biscuits are put in and that becomes part of it. And this is the lower section of the other half. Uh, so again that's going to get attached to another one of those big panels which we're going to bring out in just a moment here. So we're just going to set this one aside and then go find the largest of the five pieces. Well. It's uh, one of the two largest. We already brought the first one out. Now there is also a fifth piece, and that one is very, very small. That's just the arch over the doorway. But here's uh, the second large one, and this one is part of the bulkhead six that has the big window between the cockpit and the salon. And then. Uh, you can see now what I'm talking about, that's where this is going to attach to that piece, and so it's going to become even taller and heavier. So 
Well, we're working on the largest bulkhead on the entire boat. This is bulkhead number six, and it goes between the salon and the cockpit and all the way across both hulls. So this is thicker than many of them by far. And because it's so large, it couldn't become in just two pieces. So it actually came in five different pieces. So we have to seam the pieces together first. Then we can cut all the troughs for all the various rope and all the reinforcements we're going to put on. So this one is a ton of work. Uh, right now, uh, Dale and Brian are over here working on uh, getting the biscuit uh, ready to go in here. I'm going to use our router bit here to take out the foam, but we don't need to go as deep as we do with the rope because we only need half the thickness of our biscuit. So that's 21 millimeters. So I readjusted this to a 21 millimeter depth and we're ready to give it a whirl. All right, off we go. You can see that this piece is very thick, so it's left a section of foam here. So now I'm gonna lower using our jig further down and, and run it through again, and we'll get the rest of this. Let's see how that works. Okay, so now you can see that we've cored out the top and bottom. So you're one of two brothers of Brian, yes? I am, yes. So which is the best brother? Come on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I mean of the other two. <laughs> I can't say it, he's listening. <laughs> Anyway, um, so anyway, this is Dale, and uh, you've met him before, and uh, he's here helping again. So um, we much appreciate Dale. Not as much as Dale appreciates Dale, though, apparently. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Seems so. But um, so right now what we're doing is uh, he's peeling off some peel ply off this. This is one of the uh, biscuits that's included in the kit to fit the particular bulkhead number five that we're uh, putting together right now. So we've got to get all the peel ply off them before we put them in. So we've got them routed out now. We get the peel ply coming off. Brian's cutting them to the right lengths. So in just a few minutes here, we're going to get to the epoxy phase. This is the part where you don't slice your finger. This is where I slice the wrist open call 9-1-1. That'll make good video. What Brian's doing here is drilling some holes so that when we squeeze in the biscuit, the excess epoxy can squirt out at the back. So we have to do that for each of the biscuit areas. And here, Brian is using the Dremel because there are, are little tiny pillars of epoxy that go through this foam. And occasionally when we route it out, there's a little nubbin left over. So we have to go in there and clean that up at times. Now we're just cleaning out the uh, slots here with alcohol. We already blew them out with a compressor. Ouch. Wait a minute. Hold on, we're plugged. <laughs> so uh, we're going to wipe out these, get these two with a uh, big biscuit 
from Brian, so Big Biscuit Brian, and we'll get this uh, connected here. We already connected the other side over there. However, we won't connect these two together yet because there's a whole bunch of work we have to do putting rope inside of these openings and along the sides over there. And so it's hard to manipulate this once it becomes over 20 feet long. So like those ones way back there. So we'll finish up everything we can finish up before we connect the two sides together. And then we'll have to do the, uh, the rope around the door because that's where the, the door is. The door goes right here and that's the top of the door. So we have to connect that to connect the two panels together. But uh, this is the other half of Big Bertha bulkhead number six. And uh, it's already connected and, and curing right now. And so now we'll get this one connected and curing these pieces and we'll connect the huge ones together later. That up too quick. Okay, so fast level, fast level, fast level, and get away from it. <laughs> it's Saturday morning, and we've got the two parts here of bulkhead number six together. So that means we can now core these openings here, including that window over there. And these are all at a different depth than when we do the outer side. So uh, these are six millimeters, but we also need that five millimeters of thickened epoxy. And so we're going to take these to 11 millimeters. And then over here, we have to take a trough through from this corner right here over to that corner over there. And that's a, a, a uh, well, that section that goes along over there is 25 millimeters. And uh, here it's uh, a little less than that uh, coming through here because it doesn't need as much of um, a gap because we don't have to round the edge of it all ever. So, so we do that. So we've got 25 millimeters there. We've got 11 millimeter on these here. And then when we do the doorway, which is gonna be along that edge eventually over there, uh, that's a whole different depth. So. That's 10 millimeters, so with the extra five, that's now 15. And then all the way along the top up there, and all the way over to the side over, that's all the full 25 millimeter depth. So we've marked all the parts that have to get cored and, and how much we depth, because with three different depths, we don't want to screw up. And, you know, and the reason we don't have to core like this edge all the way along here is because this butts up to the inside of the hull in there. And so this is gonna be tabbed and this is up against the sides of the hull. And so it's gonna get tabbed. So all the stuff that gets tabbed into another wall or canoe uh, doesn't have to get uh, cord. So, but all the openings do, and that includes every door in the boat or every window or every opening, they all get uh, some rope put into them after we core them. So I'm going to core out all these things right now. And while I'm doing that, Brian's going to work on the bow. So right now the bow has been rough sanded up to a nice point, as you can see here, but it was just rough sanded. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our flexor sander and smooth this out just a bit. But we don't want to sand this part of the hole anymore. This is fine back here. We just want to sand this part up here, but we need this to give us the shape it needs to roll to. So we're going to take this piece of metal and attach it on here so that the sander, even though it's touching that part, isn't sanding it and only sanding this forward part right there.
So Terry's a very old friend of mine. I, I mean, it's not that he's old, but he is. But he's also been a friend for a long time. And uh, so he's over here helping. What we're doing right now is Terry's using the Dremel to get the corners that our tool over there can't reach. So we're getting all this whole bulkhead ready for putting a rope in. We'll do that after lunch today. All right, so go around the end of that table. And you need to go, your pinch needs to go here. We've cored everything uh, around through all the windows and all the sides and we've, we've put in the rope through that section over there and we put the rope in just now around the window that's gonna go between the salon table and the cockpit table. But uh, we still gotta put all of the rope on the outside here. All of these for the, nope. down in the hull, into the storage area. Uh, so it's a start, but that's the other half of Big Berth up there. So we end up having to do the same thing to all that, although it doesn't have quite as many openings for the windows and such, but we still have to do the two openings there and, and some of the stuff around the outside. And uh, we've decided that we're not gonna connect these two before we get them into the boat. We're gonna connect them in the boat because it's just so big and there's only a tiny little piece that goes over the top of the door to hold them together. And it would be such a weak point to lift this up over the holes and drop it in that we're gonna put these two big pieces in and connect them and put the rope in while it's actually in the boat. We have a quick correction to make from last week's video where we went over our kick up rudder steering mechanism and how the tiller head was not removable. That turns out to be wrong. It is removable, so uh, we do apologize to the manufacturer for saying it wasn't. And it saves us because we won't have to have it modified now because it's already ready to go. Yeah, in our defense, the plans that were sent for it did not show the threads on the bolt that came down from the top with a pin through it, so it looked like that couldn't be removed but there actually are threads on it and it can be unthreaded and removed. So a little egg on our face, but I'm perfectly happy to be wrong in this case because it saves us some uh, cost and labor to get it fixed and it's all ready to go. Okay, so we've reached the last week of the month. Let's talk about how it went. All right. Okay, so um, other than me being at the lot helping, what was your favorite part? <laughs> My favorite part, well, I guess the finishing of the bow, because for quite a bit here, that, that front has just been ugly with all those little pieces of green oh, for foam sure. sticking out. And worse yet, I didn't really understand how we were gonna fix it because I did talk to the uh, kit designers and they just didn't give me any good instruction on how to do this. It was more like, it was like, well, you could maybe do something like this or something like that, but it wasn't any clear instruction. So. We just kind of had to figure it out. Yeah. So uh, you saw it in the videos. We glued a bunch of pieces together and did measuring and printed pieces out. And they did send us the file for that. So um, you know, that was helpful. So that was my favorite part, getting the front fixed. And I feel a lot better about it now because that was yeah. one of the things I was, I was uh, having unpleasant dreams about what I was going <laughs> to do at night. Me too. All right, so what was the most annoying part? <laughs> well, that, that's actually pretty easy. Those um, cedar strips that came, and I still don't know why they don't work because we followed the exact instructions of Shonig. And here's the thing, other people from who built their kits have done it with those and they've managed to do it. In fact, oh. uh, when I was talking to them, they finally said, you're doing everything exactly the right way that we expect. and we don't understand why they're still not working. Is the gravity more <laughs> in California than anywhere else? <laughs> Obviously not, but it doesn't matter. We couldn't figure it out. So we just had to come up with another method. And so we had to buy our own new lumber. I don't know if their lumber in this particular run was just not very good. But the fact is, is that uh, we just had to spend more money and buy longer strips that didn't require us to put all those joints in the, in the heavy twist and curve parts. And that finally fixed the problem, but it was so annoying to snap joint after joint after joint. And then people in the comments would tell us, 
to do it a different way. And so we would, and we would try that. We would cut a longer joint. We would cut a, a, a rabbit into it. We would do all this, and it would snap again. And every time it snapped, we would just go, oh no, because that was another day or two, because we'd have to cut and, and epoxy new joints, and then they would snap again. So finally, we solved it ourselves by just going with less joints. And uh, the only joints are up there, there where they don't twist. So that was really annoying. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so at this point, where do you think we're at after all these uh, different uh, trials and tribulations on our schedule? Well, we are still on schedule despite the seven month delay in getting our laminating epoxy. And the reason that we're still on schedule is pretty simple. We just did things out of order. That four beam and all those cedar strips snapping and all that stuff, we weren't supposed to be working on that yet. But since we had to wait, we just decided that we would do things we could do. And so we got to work on that four beam. And we can't even finish the four beam without the laminating epoxy because the outside of the carbon fiber that we put on, right, yeah. has to be laminated, but we will get to it. And so we kept working. And so at this point, I think we're still on schedule. Yeah, so we were just able to change up how we did a few things here and there right. in the schedule. Exactly. And speaking of schedules, we did an estimate for how many work hours it would take to build this boat. And we've been sharing that at the end of each month uh, with everybody as to what we got done. So yeah. um, I think it's time to share that one. Yep. And we're doing good on our work hour estimates. Thanks to all the help we've been getting from family and friends, we're doing great. Let's take a look at that schedule now. All right, wonderful. And speaking of family and friends, before we look at that, um, I just want to mention some of them who helped this, yeah. this month. So Ken Doherty was out and helped a lot. Dale uh, Tassie, Brian's brother, came out mm -hmm. and helped a lot. Terry Nelson, good friend, uh, he also was out and helping. John was out and helped. And hope I'm not forgetting anybody because there was a lot of uh, folks through this month. Trevor and uh, Travis, I believe, were this month. Uh, they might well. have been last month. They but might have been. They I'm did losing track on that. really did help us a lot. <laughs> Regardless, it's worth mentioning their names it because does. They, yeah. they have totally helped. And donated some equipment to yeah, us to, to use, too. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, family and friends uh, have been just wonderful, and that's helping keep us on schedule. And uh, and those work hours will help us keep up our estimates. So now let's let's yeah. take a look at that. And they'll add up over time. So in the first week of June here, you can see that Brian and I worked our normal schedule, and Marianne put in a couple half days, and John a full day for a grand total of 96 hours. Then for the second week, Marianne again put in a couple half days, and Ken added some time out here. And so with Brian and I as well, we worked 89 hours. In the third week, Marianne worked a couple half days and Ken worked a full day plus Brian and my hours and we worked 86 hours. And the fourth week, we had Marianne for two half days, Dale and John all day and Terry another day. So that's 114 hours. Now, if we look at the grand totals, after 11 weeks, we've worked 1,047 hours and that works out to a schedule of 10,089 if we keep working at that same rate. And our goal, of course, was to work 10,000 hours. So we're basically 89 hours ahead of schedule at this point. So we're doing great. So what is next? All right, so we're talking July now, right? Yep. Okay, well, we're gonna finish up the four beam. So we have to build the other half of the wood strip planking on the top and carbon fiber the inside and put the I-beam in and all that stuff. So we're gonna try and finish that in July. Okay. But uh, how in the world could we finish it since I just mentioned that we have to have our sycamine in order to do that? Well, yes. July 1st, <laughs> the sycamine is scheduled to arrive in Los Angeles. And so somewhere in the first week of July, we're gonna go pick it up. Through the, speaking of friends who help, speaking of the Deruders. Uh, yes. <laughs> so um, we're going to have Brian DeRuder, who will help us go pick up the Sycamine. He has a big truck and trailers and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. We're going to get whole, the first canoe, the port side, finished because we'll be able to put the basalt onto it. And then we're going to get to uh, the fairing compound, and that's going to be a big job. Yeah. Uh, fairing that and sanding it and fairing it and sanding it and fairing it and sanding it. And you think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. It'll take at least three rounds of fairing and sanding, at least. 
So lots of sanding and, and things. That'll all happen in July, though. We're going to get that, that hole finished. And then we're going to have the rooters come back in with their uh, um, bobcat, pick it up, move it, flip it over, and put it onto the stands. And then we're going to start strip planking, at least the dry fitting of the starboard canoe. And so that's going to start in July as well. But we're also going to finish up all of the bulkhead rope, which we started this last week. And so we're getting into high gear in July. We're going to get a lot done. And that means that uh, we not only stay on schedule, but uh, we're going to meet that deadline that I have in October to November to have the boat in general shape sitting there. The hulls and the bulkheads going across and decks on. And it'll look like a catamaran wow. by then. So. <laughs> July is, is a key month for us here, though, because now that the Sycamore's here, we can finish the four beam, we can finish the, the porthole, and we can even finish those bulkheads because they require laminating on certain parts as well. So July is going to be one busy month, and we will share all of that with our viewers. Hopefully the weather uh, cooperates with us yeah, and well, not we're, too hot. <laughs> we're in, yeah, there's that. At least the rain should be over. We've yes. had so much rain. Uh, it's just uncharacteristic of California. Yeah. And so uh, at this point, um, I'm hoping that's over with. The heat will be a problem. But that just means that we're going to be starting earlier in the mornings uh, so that we can do epoxy work when it's cooler. And we can sand in the heat as long as we don't get heat stroke. <laughs> but anyway, so that's going to wrap it up for this week. Yep. And uh, we'll get on to that July coming up. Okie doke. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Yep. And we'll get started with July and our sycamore. Yay! All right. See you next week, everybody. Bye.